Finding yourself the prey in the talons of an owl on a dark night is a gruesome affair. The owl will rip you to pieces or eat you whole. Then it will digest you later to spit up a compacted pellet of what was your fur and bones. Then the owl kicks back, rolls itself a cigarette, and smokes it while listening to the wolves howl. This is the smoking owl. You can't look at them. Well, at least not directly. They only appear as shadows or dark figures. You won't be able to touch them or interact with them in any way. You will strain against their power to no avail, losing any hope of retribution. They will leave you with nothing but haunted memories of the terror that is helplessness, hopelessness. Knowing that you can do nothing, no matter what you try. The first time it happened, I was visiting my mother, visiting my mother at the family home. My little sister still lived there, and after a brief conversation with both of them, we decided to go to bed. I had been on a really long drive into the city and I was feeling fatigued and had to forego any television or phone games. Since my old room was being renovated, I had to sleep on the couch. It was more than adequate and quite comfortable, so there was no complaint from me. I'm sure that it was less than 15 minutes before I was fast asleep. That was around 11.30 p.m. The incident occurred at about 3 a.m. So that you understand what happened that night, I'll give you an idea where each of us slept. The couch was in the living room, facing inward, right outside my sister's room, which had no door, also due to the renovations. From the front of the house, her room was in the front on the right side. Walking in the door, there was a foyer and a hallway to the left where the main rooms of the house reside. My old room was at the end of the hall on the left side of the house. There was another bedroom or guest room before you got to mine. The master bedroom was next to mine and directly across the other room. The bathroom is the first door on the right when you go down that hallway. From the foyer, you can walk directly into the kitchen. To the right of the kitchen is the living room so try to assemble the image. When I awoke, I couldn't move any of my limbs. It was a numbness that produced a dull ache all over my body, and I just wanted to cry out. Yet the only thing that came out of this was a low moan. It was so low, in fact, it might as well have been a whisper. I tried to raise my head, but it was like pushing against a building. A few seconds into it, I see a shadow pass in front of me and I assume it's my sister, but it stops at the end of the couch and looks. I can't make out the face and it's all shadow. I know my sister's shape and whatever this was, it didn't move like her. It wasn't shaped like her. I think it was trying to move past me, unnoticed but it must have heard my moan. I am sure if anyone in my family had seen me, they would have known I was in distress. This thing, whatever it was, had no interest in helping. It was dark in the room, but not dark enough to ignore the look in my eyes, the terror that was there. It can't be mistaken, but it stood there for what I think was 30 seconds. The whole time, I'm trying to scream. Inwardly, I'm raging. The thrashing against unseen shackles, convulsing. Then slowly, just as it had walked into frame, it walked out towards the foyer. Even then, I was still attempting to scream. The back of the couch blocked my view, so once it was out of sight, I was able to move again. It was like the breaking of bonds. And I sat violently upright and yelled as loud as I could. My sister came out of her room in panic. Understandably, she yelled at me and said, 
What the hell is going on? I stopped yelling when I saw her since she came from the opposite direction of that thing uh, where it went. There could be no confusing the two. I asked her anyway, just to make sure I wasn't cracking up. Did you just come out of your room a few seconds ago? To go to the bathroom or something? She said she did. But that had been over an hour ago. She had been sleeping before I woke her up with my wailing. I just looked at her, incredulous, not sure if she was just fucking with me. However, my sister doesn't even do practical jokes. It's, it's far removed from her character. Was somebody over then, your boyfriend? No, why, what happened? There was something there, somebody was there. I couldn't move, I couldn't talk. It was like it was forcing me down, holding me there until it could go. She raised her eyebrows at this and said she didn't hear or see anything. Just my screaming, just me screaming my head off. From there I just got up and went to the front door. I looked out and saw nothing out of sorts. I even opened the door and stepped out of my porch. More of nothing. I shut the door and came back inside. I went into the hall and checked all the rooms. And there, not surprisingly, was nothing. Lastly, I checked my mother's room. The reason why I knew I couldn't have been, it couldn't have been my mother was that she's older and a bit overweight. She couldn't have moved like that, no more than could my sister. It was just silly to assume. It's like trying to make a puzzle piece fit into a space that it obviously doesn't go. Occam's razor states that the least complicated hypothesis is likely the best. It's easier to think that my mother was the culprit, but that wasn't plausible. Her TV is always on in her room, so I heard that going in addition to her snoring. My mother is a pretty light sleeper, so I knew the moment I opened the door she'd wake up. Still, she never has, she never has a problem going back to sleep. I have done this numerous times throughout our lives so I knew it wasn't going to be a big deal. When I opened the door, she immediately stopped snoring but didn't get up. I went over to her bed, and she was already looking at me through sleepy eyes. Somewhat perturbed, she asked me what was going on. I told her that I think there was someone in the house, and I wondered if she had company late. She tells me no, and to get out of her room and close the door. I asked her if anyone else has a key to the house, to which she says, no. And then she says, leave me alone, I'm sleeping. We've had a couple conversations since then with no resolution. I looked into the sleep paralysis phenomenon it's not uncommon for people to see ghosts or other figures while this is happening. Oddly enough, almost a week after it happened to me again in my own home, there was no dark figure present, but there was a presence that I felt. I hope it never happens again because it is genuinely one of the most frightening things ever. <laughs>